Hello, welcome back to our joint multiplayer session with myself, Rodru, as Tunis, and my co-host, NG Paradox, playing as Serbia. Where do we leave off, NG Paradox? Well, I just finished the war with Hungary, or should I say Poland did, and so now I'm basically have to look what else to do now. I need to try and expand, but we have the, I have the Ottomans, I have Hungary above me, now I have France, uh, Venice, you know, is next to me, but I'll be warned by the Ottomans, so I can't declare war on Venice. I'm basically in a bit of a pickle. How about you? Well, I have some pretty big vassals right below me. Pretty much everybody that's not uh, Limson or the Mamluks that is directly bordering me is a vassal, or will become a vassal. Just about to take out my Zob here. I'm not sure if I'm going to vassalize them or just eat them up. I think eating them is the uh, the best course of action. Am I going robotic-y after that? I know the... Uh, nah, your, nah, your voice is perfectly fine. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, actually, have you looked into Naples? I think you can actually fabricate on Berry. Look. Uh, you have no diplomats. Okay, I have no diplomats right now. Second... Speaking of that, I do have diplomats. When can I annex you, Fizan? One year from now. All right. And Jared, I just got, didn't I? Yeah, just got Jared to Gert I've had longer, two years from now. So I should be able to expand there pretty easily. Oh, I should have taken exploration ideas. I'm a big dummy. I could have started uh, expanding into Africa. Darn. That's normal. Yeah, now I'm going to have to wait a, even longer. But I guess not being so big is going to help me westernize. I think uh, the lower your income is, the faster you westernize. I think that's the way it works. Oh yeah, you know, you're right. I can uh, fabricate on Naples. Yeah, that might be a good idea. They yeah. are allied with uh, England. So that might be an issue with the naval AI being better in the recent patch. They'll definitely send some men down here. Yeah. But England is still actually in France. They have one place left in France. Facing a lot of old heretics who seem to be taken over. Yeah, England's not in a good place. They have uh, noble rebels too, so I'm guessing they're going through the uh, War of the Roses event. Possibly, yeah. I might as well just make a claim just in case I could use it later. It'll be hard for you to get yeah. over there without uh, any navy. You I might have to get a bunch right of, now. Might have to get a bunch of military access through Austria, Switzerland, Milan. But I'd have to go through Hungary, and Hungary absolutely hate me. Oh, you would. But yeah. then I, I do have my allies though as well. So I do have Austria who can help. I was telling you, man. We'll see, yeah. You should have just declared a separate war on Hungary. You've been able to take Liga then, at the very least. Possibly, yeah. I I'm not too bored about it right now. What I'm going to do for my plan is I'm going to make some claims on Hungary and wait for one of my allies, Austria or Poland, because Austria and Poland are likely to declare war on Hungary in the future. When they do declare war, I will take those places I have claims and the AI, I find, at least in the new patch, uh, Art of War, they always seem to give you your claims. If you've taken those places, they usually seem to give it to you in a peace deal. I found the opposite with uh, Art of War. If you're uh, just allied with them, I hardly ah. ever get the AI giving me any provinces, even if I have a claim on them. Hardly ever. It's real annoying. Really? Yeah. I, yeah. I find it all the time. Oh. Maybe maybe they just don't maybe they just don't like you. They probably don't. I'm, I <laughs> usually play pretty angry nations, real aggressive nations. Not a surprise. But uh, hey, Tagort, they're actually converting this I body province for me. That's awesome. Good job, Tagort. Okay. Yeah. So I won't have to deal with that uh, religious disunity once I annex them, because they're already converting it for me. I don't have to go through the trouble. You're in a pretty good position. You got basically the two allies you'd want, who could fret. 
Yeah, I'm pretty uh, cut off from any Western aggression. I'm not playing Morocco. They usually take the brunt of the Iberian aggression. Castile gets a lot of events to take things like Iran, Melilla. Portugal gets events to take uh, Ceuta, Tangiers, and Garb. Yeah. yeah. That's probably the only thing you need to worry about is just those Iberian countries down. Once I get big enough, I don't think I'm going to be too worried about them. I'm in the Muslim yes. tech group. I'm not going to be too far behind in tech. I think I want to lag behind in Diplo tech so I can westernize. But other than that, I'm just going to keep up on military. Let's see. I can't give Mazab to, to Gort in the peace deal because that's their capital. Uh, so, yeah. I, I think I just have to full annex and sell this province to Tagort. Hmm. Actually, I've noticed uh, Poland has taken care of their rebel problem. Like, they'll be okay. Yeah, I'm not too surprised about that. Lithuania is a pretty good attack dog. They babysit Poland pretty well. Yeah, that, that, it just, that, um, the fact they inherit Lithuania is so ridiculous. At the beginning. The personal union just makes them so powerful. Well, once Muscovy, once Muscovy starts forming, they're going to start taking big chunks out of Lithuania. It happens all the time. Uh, actually, Muscovy's already starting. They've basically eaten most of Novgorod already. I can't see Muscovy at all. It's all in fog of war for me. Uh, yeah, I yeah, can see... Uh, big. I can see some of Lithuania, well, most of Lithuania, the Golden Horde and Kazan, but Muscovy is just completely blurred out. Yeah, they, they basically have that whole north area. I've heard people say that Muscovy in Art of War has not done so well. Like, they get eaten okay. up by the hordes around them. Personally, I haven't seen that. Maybe the... Maybe the devs didn't want Russia forming all the time. I think a lot of people get annoyed by you know Russia because they're so powerful. Maybe uh, Russia did deserve a nerf, uh, especially with that colonies. Uh, the uh, local autonomy is locked at fifty percent for the new Siberian colonies, so they're a little bit weaker already from that. But okay. just uh, just forming their initial country, just forming Russia. I I can see how it's a little bit harder. The Golden Horde seems to be in a stronger position somehow. I've never seen the Golden Horde do well except in the recent patch, uh, the 1.8 patch. But they seem to be holding on in most of my games now. Well, actually, talking about, uh, you were saying about the, some of the ideas there, the one thing I really love about the Art of War at the moment, the new patch, is all the new ideas. I love the fact that they made so many new ideas with so many countries. Like, like I was saying before, I love all the little things they add. And that was one thing I've really enjoyed, just seeing different countries with different ideas. Yeah, even the small ones, like the ones that have no chance of staying yep. around. I do love Theodoro. that too. Theodoro. <laughs> Theodoro, yeah. I knew you might mention him. It's a nice little thing that they added, which just allows you to immerse yourself a little bit more, makes them all feel a bit different. I'm not sure uh, how effective those ideas are once they get gobbled up. <laughs> Especially Trebizond. I'm playing another series as Trebizond. They've got some neat ideas. They've got some flavor. But really, they just they exist to be eaten up by somebody else, it seems. I, I'm not sure how I'm going to make that one work. Yeah, Trebizond, they, they basically just become a vassal for someone normally. In my other series, I have already become a vassal of Korra Koyunlu. In the next episode, we're <laughs> going to be uh, trying to fight them off. I got the Mamluks to support my independence, so that should be pretty fun. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to use that's, that's the... impressive uh, to get the Mamluks. going to use the Muslims to fight the Muslims. It's a good strategy. Not the best thing to do. I'm real disappointed I'm at my force limit. I've got a, a big fleet just sitting here being mothballed, doing absolutely nothing. Uh, I probably don't need this much. Two? Hello? Is there any chance we can raise the speed to two? Oh, yeah, yeah. Maybe up to three. Just because yeah, just so far I've, I've not much going on. 
didn't even notice it was that low. Let's see, uh, I have three Ibadi provinces I could probably start converting. Probably a good idea. Well, I was saying to you in the other video that um, the, the reason I got into these Paradox games because of three, that was the first old Paradox game I played. Yeah. Uh, how did you get into, like, Crusader Kings 2 and Europe? Well, uh, I started off in EU3. I didn't know much about the game. I was a little bit younger then, so I didn't understand it quite as well. I, I liked EU3. It, it was a lot to get into at the time for me, so I didn't put too much time into it. But I really enjoyed the, the general concept of it and got me much more interested in history. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people who are into EU4 and other Paradox games started out in EU3 as well. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, EU3 was one of the first ones. For the life of me, I, I've i pretty much erased memories of EU3 and replaced them with EU4. I can hardly remember the game now. Oh, really? I remember Divine Wind and playing a lot of Japan, and, but it's still kind of foggy. <laughs> Did you play a lot of Japan in EU3, or what was your, uh, your go-to for EU3? Um... I usually just picked like a random nation every time. I, I kind of like that. I like to put myself in a random position. Um, oh, okay, again, conquest, that was it. Sorry, the noise came up and I was like, oh, what's going on? <laughs> uh, no, I normally just pick a random nation. Um, yeah, I just, I like to just pick myself a random nation and just deal the hand I'm dealt. Um, I'm never particularly bothered about picking a certain place. I, I usually hate being a big nation. I find it slightly boring sometimes. I do the same thing. Like, every time I see the Ottomans played on the uh, the EU4 subreddit, I'm like, yeah, you can play the Ottomans, you can play France, but that's a real easy game. Like, I, I like starting out in a tougher position, the underdog, coming out from the below and, you know, just taking over the world. That's why I probably like playing Byzantium so much. Not so much because I'm a Byzantophile or into the Roman Empire so much just because it's an underdog state. Yeah, I think that's why a lot of people love uh, Byzantium from the EU series. I think a lot of people get into Byzantium, the whole idea of the Eastern Roman Empire, because of Paradox Games, because of EU3, EU4. I've never, like... Back when I first started playing these games, I had never heard of Byzantium. I was so completely ignorant of the entire region. I think a lot of people are the same, actually. Yeah, it, it wouldn't surprise me if, you know, I'm not the only one that hasn't heard of a ton of nations in this game, uh, in the world, actual historical nations, before they played a Paradox game. Well, actually, like things like even the Holy Roman Empire, most people in England have no idea what that is. Really? That would surprise me. Yeah. Like a European nation not knowing what the Holy Roman Empire is. In America, not so surprising. But a European nation, a little bit. Well, in, in England, we don't tend to learn much about German history. We only learn... Uh, we learn mostly about French and Spanish. And then we learn about modern German history. We don't tend to learn about the German areas before Germany was formed. I wonder if there's some sort of uh, reason for that, like England wants to forget about Germany for some reason before they had a hand in politics over there? I, I have no Not idea. Not really. Not really. We didn't have much... We didn't... ...to do with... Uh, we concentrate on Nazis. Really? <laughs> yeah, basically if you go to history in England... Everyone has to learn about Nazi Germany. Like, how did it happen? How, how did it start? Uh, what happened? What did they do? And then the lead up to the war. Everyone in England basically learns that. So I think that's too much Germany then. So if they did... Just cut out there at the end of your sentence. Uh, that was kind of getting I was saying, if, if we did more about Germany, we'd do, all about, you know, we'd do a lot of German history. Well, it's a it's a pretty big we region, do. pretty pretty big region in Europe, German yes. Germany. <laughs> well, this is the thing. Also, British people don't tend to know the different cultures in Germany. Did you know Bohemians, uh, Bavarians, uh, the Saxons, the uh, Brandenburg, they don't, and the Hess? They don't kind of know these areas. It's kind of weird. Most people in England. 
That is pretty weird. I, I wouldn't think it's the same way in mainland Europe. Like, say, if you're if yes. you're French, you probably know everything about Germany. I mean, you're directly bordering them. I, I guess I'm not yes. so surprised that England kind of focuses on their own history and you know more modern history for uh, for Germany, things that they were involved in personally recently. They want their children to know about that. It makes sense to me. Yeah, so so most people in uh, England kind of know about like Germany. They know about Germany, but before Germany, they don't tend to actually know much about it. Um, which yeah, I sometimes find kind of weird. Holy Roman Empire and stuff in the different states is kind of interesting. It's very interesting, and like I was saying before, uh, before I got into EU four, I didn't know about the Holy Roman Empire. I'll just uh, admit that straight up. Yeah, like I said, I don't, I don't think most people do outside of maybe, like you say, France, Germany, Austria, Poland, that sort of area. Because there's a lot of history for every part of the world, and you can't learn all of it, I guess. Okay. Well, that's what uh, Paradox Games really help with. It, yeah. I have no complaints about that. <laughs> and allows you to change history. You can destroy the HRE. You can. I actually haven't done that in a game of EU4. I've played like a thousand hours. I've never destroyed the HRE. Now, I'm finding myself saying H now, like H. Uh, that's not a normal thing for me. Uh, and that's a very uh, British way of pronouncing the letter. You still here? Get some. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to figure out who to make a claim on. I'm going to make a claim on some Ottoman lands, just in case we go to war with them in the future. I, I always like to have options with my, uh, my claims, like I say, because if my ally goes to war with them, they normally give it to me. That's I real find. ambitious of you. Fabricating a, clay, a claim on the Ottomans right now. <laughs> Making a claim on where Albania used to be. Elbasan, correct? Yeah. Yep. I don't even know why you'd want to claim that. It's one base tax. That's such... Oh, it's so useless. It's Albania, you know? It's on the coast. It, it would make my... I like nice borders. Yeah. And away. also, I, I I want to make sure the Ottomans and Hungary are connected. That way they might, you know, fight each other. I don't want to get in the way of that either. You might. I've seen the Ottomans eat quite a lot of Hungary in my games. Wait, the Ottomans are at war with Morocco? Yeah, I actually declined a call from Morocco to fight against uh, Tlemcen. And the Ottomans were yeah. on that. So I didn't want to break my alliance. I'd rather break my alliance with Morocco than... Uh, than the Ottomans. Well, on that note, I think uh, we've run out of time for this episode. So, are you in a good spot? Uh, yeah, I'm perfectly fine. Not much is really happening right now. Just making the claims and stuff. Ready for an opportunity. I'm yeah. an opportunist. I should be annexing two vassals here in this next episode. Very exciting. But uh, if you've enjoyed our episode and you're new to the series, please consider subscribing for new episodes. Uh, for whoever you're watching, either myself, Rogeru, playing here as Tunis, or my co-host, NG Paradox, playing as Serbia. If you like the video, please consider hitting like as well. That helps us out a lot. And we'll see you next time. Good luck.